Adeptus Critic this Podcast. As always, my name is DK. As always, his name is Bricky. And we are going to be delving into the grim darkness that is Warhammer 40k lore. But before we do, if you enjoyed today's podcast and you maybe want to consider supporting us, patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, where you can get access to the bloopers if they happen, uh, the Discord, uh, the $15 tier gets you access to all of our HD posters. It's a wonderful investment. Patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. Bricky, tell them about merch, the book club, maybe an ad. Yeah, those things. Uh, check out the merch if you want to over at Orchidate.com. Link in the description. Grab yourself a plethora of posters, a plethora of shirts, tank tops, and so hoodies and so on and so forth. Get your hoodies. Prepare for the fall coming up soon. Mm. And uh, Book Club is Eisenhorn. But, you know, none of that stuff really matters today. There is something far, far more important for everyone. Shy, tell, tell them what it is, Shy. Tell them what it is. At 7 a.m. UTC on March 28, 2311, the Earth was attacked. To this day, we still don't know what they wanted. It took 13 years. On June 20th, 2323, we made a decisive retaliation. We had destroyed one of their motherships, and with it, one of their super weapons. And on that day, we had proven the indomitability of the human spirit. Although, we did have some help. When you get all amped up and animated like this, it's kind of hot. Is that Ezra Foy I see without a drink in her hand? It wasn't until you and I started using our hours together that I started to not think that I was an outcast. Ezra, my boy! Look at you! You look five years younger since last time we spoke. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Ezra Foy. Humanity has a long and storied history of being indomitable, adaptable, persevering, and stubborn as all hell. <laughs> Nikita Klein. Carla Vaughn. It won't be tomorrow. It won't be next week or next month. The time will come. It's up to you to know it when you see it. Pretty unusual for the mother of the family to be the one to jump into the spaceship and suit up to fight in a war against some evil invading aliens, isn't it? What? Ew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As readings. Thank you all for your time. Well, by golly, Shy made a video game. Yeah. She did. God and save our souls. As the kids say, it's pretty poggers. Is it pretty poggers? It's pretty poggers. I've 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 played a little bit of it. It's pretty nice. I enjoy it. Nice. It's nice. It's not even is this I, not even cursed? You know, I'm I've always been told that video that making video games is very easy. So I'm glad <laughs> that we can confirm that. <laughs> Oh, yes, I'm sure Shy will be confirming that this was easy. She turned it over in just a day with no effort whatsoever, right? I love Unity. <laughs> if you couldn't tell, that was sarcasm, by the way. It is a nightmare. In, indeed, it's indeed. All, it's a nightmare. This time I'm actually going to do it. Do what? Oh, never mind. You were, gonna, uh, so, you were trying to hit the the one of the sounds, the dying emoji scream you were going for. Nope. Did you, you fumble it? Nope. nope. Oh, wow. Oh. Nothing nothing like that. Wow. I'm so there, there's a there, there's there's a picture of Harry Dubois and, and it says <laughs> when I'm happy. Dubois. When I'm happy I say bitches love my mustache. When I'm sad I say this time I'm actually going to do it. Oh, oh, it was, oh, it was that, okay, I, yeah, you get right. it now, now I get it, I did not realize this was a Disco Elysium reference, I should have, and, it was, 
Oh. It's not a Disco Elysium reference either. It's just a statement. It's fine. You oh, know what? Well, you said you know, Mr. You know Dubois what? and Harry, and that's at the. Te- <sighs> it's 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 Elysium adjacent, and that's dark enough to be something that he would say. No, not even the not even the slightest. It was a joke to begin with, and then I turned it into a disco because you didn't get it originally. Yeah, well, your mother. I'm, dis- I'm based in disco pilled. What are you, huh? What are you? I. Hey, man. I, cringe you're cringe dk hey, are you man. ready for your quote yes man like you needed to badger me before you couldn't have just been like yeah okay dk i totally see that and then embarrass me with the quote i'm gonna get embarrassed either way all right hold on i need to find the um i need to find the warhammer uh voice effect let's see <laughs> the, all right am i warhammery now Oh wow! Actually, yeah, you you are actually pretty okay. warhammery. Uh, the ham. Okay. Jeez. Cool. <clears throat> Every watch fortress is a light in the darkness, a blazing watch fire that drives back the shadows in which the Xenos lurks. Without their illumination, the Emperor's worlds would be swallowed up one by one, bound into shrouds of endless night, stitched close by alien claws. Inquisitor Ishmael. Um, I, I don't know what this is specifically, and it, I mean, it sounds like some fancy Imperium tech that just maybe sort of is unpleasant to Xenos and they stay away from. Uh, I, I don't know if I can really pinpoint what this is other than fancy, maybe psychery watchtower lighthouse that just beams Xenos hurting stuff you did you did you take the the word illumination literally enough to assume it means lighthouse no not like a lighthouse isn't it doesn't it like literally just like keep away like xenos and it's probably like a gun turret or some nonsense you think we're gonna have an entire episode on a gun turret yeah we we did a whole episode on a freaking bolter that is so different also, oh, Shy, okay. that is an excellent okay. image. Thank you very much. She's used that like several times before in videos already. Like, she, that's not the first time she's uh, used that. Oh, I don't watch our content. It's cringe. <sighs> All right. Just tell me what it is. We're doing the Death Watch. I mean, yeah, I guess if I had used my brain at all or there was more than one neuron uh, rattling around in there. That, yeah, because eh, it's a eh, it's a they're, they're the watch over the Xenos and they specialize in. Killing. Yeah, OK, that's fair. All right. Death well, Watch. Sense. Yeah, Death Watch. And they're cool Yay! black and gold armor, right? Yeah, uh, well, black and silver more so. But yes. Nice. The Death, the Death Watch. So we uh, are talking about the Death Watch today. It is one of the only, like, chapter or one of the only codexes that we have not done yet. Uh, I think we're still missing Thousand Suns. Mm-hmm. I don't think. I know. And, oh, like, Space Wolves. Too. Codexes. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They wouldn't have a codex, would they? So good old, uh, good old Death Watch. Uh, but um, but yeah, like like specifically codexes, like a codex you can actually buy. Yeah, uh, yeah would be yeah. a Death Watch. Um, Do you think the they, Raven Guard will ever get one? Like yeah, one day probably. Codex? Okay. But uh, yeah, the Death Watch. Um, I won't lie. I knew very little about the Death Watch going in. I knew they were a bunch of alien hunters. I knew that they uh, killed a lot of Xenos, and they were pretty good at it. And uh, that was about where my knowledge ended. So this was a good bit of um, of lore looking up today. And yeah, that's, uh, that's I gotta about say, all I knew too, was that they just killed Xenos and they had cool armor. Gotta gotta say, gotta say, there was less than I thought there would be. Oh, no, really? That's kind of... Is their whole thing literally just, yeah, we just like killing Xenos, and that's just kind of the meat and potatoes of it. End of story. That's all we do. That's all we want to do. No, no. But, like, it's... There isn't an entire massive, like, founding thing. There's not as much as, like, the Grey Knights have. Mm. There's a bit of of that kind of jazz. So, 
I'll go ahead and get started into it. You hit me with the um, lore, Bricky. Hit me with that deep, deep lore. All right. You don't need to say deep twice. That's fair. That was uncomfortable, actually. I am uncomfortable. Yeah. Anyway, um, so this was the Death Watch was founded in one of two ways. Uh, there's a question about uh, which one was founded because Imperial records are often bad. Um, now, <laughs> I will say that I kind of believe it's both. One kind of happens as an initial founding point and the other is the solidification of the founding point. Um, but this in particular has taught me something very important. That is, God damn it, we really need to do a goddamn War of the Beast episode. Um, oh, yeah. I I don't even remember what the War of the Beast is. Did we, haven't, I, I know we've brought it up. I guess we haven't done an episode on it, but... Sorry, I don't mean a War of the Beast episode. <laughs> I mean a War of the Beast, like, trilogy, because it's very oh. long. I'm assuming um, that's a, but, this is a Xenos thing, the War of the Beasts, because, like I said, I know it's been mentioned, I know people have asked for it, but I... So, I the, the War of the Beast is a basically a gigantic orc wall attacking Terra. Oh. Um, yeah, it's like the most orc wall of all time, <laughs> um, and, and it is, yeah, there's also orc moons, Oh, are those the ones that you told me about that are, like, propelled by, like, they just slap giant rockets on the back of, like, meteors and planets, and we're just like, yeah, we're just going to fling this at you at mock speed. No, no, uh, no, much worse. It's like an orc <laughs> Death Star. Like, it's a ramshackled, created, physically made orc Death Star. It's, uh, oh, War of the okay. Beast is a time it is it is not the most well written as far as i'm concerned but it is a thing that exists okay, okay so we need um, to do that at some point but today we're one doing, day we're doing death watch yes okay. um so this was apparently founded during the war of the beast uh de dealing with one the beast which is like a <laughs> giga orc mm -hmm. um bigger than gas coal and everything um wow. yeah he's a big boy that's a big uh, so, orc uh, during that period of time, small little Astartes teams were sent out to try to deal with the beast itself and various other high-ranking uh, members of the Orc Horde. As we all know, when the boss is killed, there tends to be a power struggle, and then the Orcs kind of kill each other for uh, having, you know, becoming the boss. And so it's pretty good to take down the uh, command of an Orc <laughs> structure. If you can. Um, if you can, because they are gigantic. Yeah, if he's bigger than Gaskell, good freaking luck, Astartes. Not not just Gaskell, but also like all of his other like orc mechs and various things. Mm -hmm. um, so these were originally recruits taken from surviving members of various orc invasions. Uh, the idea is that these people have seen and survived the orc fight, and they act as a shield watching over their fallen brothers that were killed by the orcs. How many people uh, at the were recruits and they were like, hey, so we know you have some experience with surviving the orcs. And would you like to go and be a special orc ops? And they're just like, no. Hello? I survived once. Get the fuck out of my face. I'm not doing that again. Bro, these are Astartes. That's true. Astartes would relish the chance to, like, redeem themselves after a uh, after failing or, yeah. That's yeah. Probably, they they let, want let that your... sweet revenge, right? Let your armor be hate as one of their main <laughs> sayings. <laughs> so, uh, no, they'd so. be like, hey, dude, orcs kill all your friends. You want to go do nothing but kill orcs? Like, yes. <laughs> I, I Are you high? Be, I guess that would be the Astartes wet dream, wouldn't it? Is, yeah, yes. Fair enough. You, are you on ultra booths again? <laughs> <laughs> you must puff, oh, puff, pass, Gilliman. <laughs> Anyway, um, so at the time, the current Lord Commander of the Imperium, a.k.a. what Gilliman is now, uh, mm -hmm. was done by a Imperial Fist Chapter Master, a guy named Courland, Chapter Master Courland. And so in this time of desperation, he created these elite strike teams of surviving uh, Astartes dedicated to killing orcs along uh, with the High Lords of Terra kind of acting as... Um, like the de facto lord of the uh, uh, lord of the imperium mm -hmm. at the time 
you know, people weren't super stoked on this whole thing because a lot of the surviving members were like from various chapters. Like, here, Blood Angel, Imperial Fist, Space Wolves, go together and kill this orc guy. And it's like, <laughs> eh, it's a little weird. And it's also not very good when it comes to the Codex Astartes that happened after the heresy. Oh, you know, yeah, they prob- people iffy. probably would be a little suspicious of a group that's like formed of various different space marines that are all coming to get yeah i guess after after that whole horus thing you would be just a little suspect of a group like that but you know uh the orcs are currently sieging terra with orc death stars so you know necessity breeds invention as they say (laughs) yes it does yes it does so, uh, obviously, the War of the Beast finished. We won. Wahoo! Hooray! Um, well, obviously, I we think, won because Terra's still there. I think that's the last time Vulcan has been seen. I think Vulcan oh, died the killing beast. the Beast. Yeah. Oh, Vulcan killed... Wow, spoilers for the War of the Beast episode. Now I'm gonna I, know. I literally think oh I said that God, in the Vulcan Ricky. episode. Yeah, but my brain doesn't remember that. So... You know, Vulcan suplexed the beast into a nuclear bomb. I am barely joking, (laughs) says Shy. What a Vulcan thing to do. Based? Wow. (laughs) Based and green pilled? Yeah. Can you do, can can you, Shy, in post, can you edit that Final Fantasy VI thing of Sabin uh, suplexing the train, but put like a big like nuke in, in, in there instead of the train? You know? Someone suplexes a train? They can. In Final Fantasy VI, you, you fight a ghost train, and one of your characters is a martial artist that you can input commands and have him suplex stuff, and he can absolutely suplex the ghost train. What, what the Except hell the was with that part? everything. What the hell was with that part in Final Fantasy VII where you were in, like, the ghost train yard? That was such a random part. Yeah, it kind of was, wasn't it? That's in the, the remake, right? Yeah, but the horse dude was kind of cool. Anyway, yeah, anyway, um, oh my God, Shy, he is. At, oh, there, what? There's so oh much my. art. There's so <laughs> oh much art of Saban suplexing trains because it is such an iconic thing to do in that game. Wait, is it because you have like a an attack that that often is a suplex, and the train is acting as an enemy, so he suplexes the train? Yes, exactly. That's it's, that's it's, amazing. It's the old sprite thing, so it's like yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's one of the most iconic things you can do in that game is suplex a train. Okay, that's, that's wonderful. I love it. Mm-hmm, um, it's great. Anyway, so War of the Beast is over. And at the time we had the Inquisition, but the Inquisition was kind of just like a old school inquisition pretty generally made to deal with demons because at this time the gray knights were around and and murdering demons and stuff but that was mm-hmm. their main shtick yeah. um past that this is kind of where it says that there were two ways the death watch founded i kind of believe both where the initial start was this war the beast part and then after that there was a conclave of inquisitor lords known as the Oh, boy. Apocryphon Conclave Uh, of Orphite 4. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay. Whole idea was to formulate a major strategy to deal with the Xenos threats that assailed mankind. Um, They Inquisitors are pretty often psychers. Um, That's just Mm. kind of a really often big trait of them. Yeah. Um, And they assumed that the Xenos would... Well, they they kind of, one, maybe scribed the future, did a little Eldar stuff, but also <laughs> they sat around for many years and debated back and forth, back and forth on the idea of dealing with Xenos. Some believed that every single trace of alien life should be purged from the galaxy. Uh, others w- were like, hey, craft world Eldar aren't great, but they're not like the worst. Yeah, I, I was going to say the Imperium has benefited so much from like, Eldar help in their history that it's like really y'all wanna y'all wanna erase, erase every trace of Eldar and Xenos existence like you have benefited from their help on a plethora of occasions maybe maybe make an exception there was also there's also the the new young upstarts the Tau you know well actually I don't know if we we found the Tau yet at this point in time so yeah because this is still um, early Warhammer lore right 
Yeah, like post heresy, but not that far. So, yeah. uh, but but some also spoke of kind of seeing the future, and they were like uh, godlike beings slumbering before the birth of mankind, reawakening to enslave the galaxy, and death from in the invasion of um, Xenos from other galaxies. So you know, obviously, Krons and Nids. Yeah, yeah. And Shai, Shai hit us with the, uh, what, I, even I've seen this quote rolling around where it's like, oh, we kill Xenos because they're all dangerous and want to kill humans. My brother in Christ, that's because you killed all the friendly ones. It's like someone mentioned the same thing about the LAS gun. Is like the LAS oh. gun is one of the most powerful weapons devised, but in Warhammer, it's kind of bad. A flashlight. And that's because, yeah, that's because it's, it was extremely effective at murdering the other 99% of Xenos. <laughs> yeah. Tough shit, Guardsman. You're fighting that last 1%. Yeah, yeah, it was super efficient. And then, yeah, that last 1% is a little, little, little harder to kill. So, with this fear, uh, some Inquisitors, particularly Puritan ones, all kind of took this not well because Puritan Inquisitors are like even thinking. That mankind, the greatest thing in the world and, and the galaxy, could ever fall to Xenos is heresy. Uh, while oh. they were there and being annoying, um, they were mostly shut down. And the Inquisition, Inquisition was split into two arms. The Ordo Malleus, demons, Grey Knights, yeah. and the Ordo Xenos, now looking to get their own major militant arm, being the... Say it, DK. No. The Death Watch. The Death Watch. Also, the, the Death Watch. The the Puritans are such extremists that even suggesting that you would need to make a Death Watch was considered like heretical to them. Because how dare you suggest that the Emperor, the Empire, would ever fall to anyone? Like they were that extreme. P- Puritan Puritans are are often like sit on your hands and do nothing because the Emperor watches over us type people. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Remember that plant that refused to fight the Nids because suggesting that Xenos would ever attack them was heresy? <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's just crazy. That's wild. Uh, Dude, religion religion will, will do some things to you if you are that devout. Yeah, I was going to say, like, extremists, I guess, are never the most rational people, are they? No, that's why they are called extremists. Extremists, yeah, yeah. They kind of ruin everything. So, um, therefore, we had the foundation of the Death Watch. And I also believe the uh, Inquisition would, with time, break into more and more factions later on. We had a whole episode on Inquisitorial uh, factions. Um, Once the Sisters of Battle come around, a few thousand years later, you'll have your Ordo Hereticus, most likely. Mm -hmm. Um, Which, you know, because that's the militant arm of the Inquisition is the Ordo Hereticus. Sure, sure. Uh, But, um, so... Therefore, the Death Watch hell point. Remember when I said we had Space Marines and then we had Super Space Marines, which were Grey Knights, and then we had Super Super Space Marines, which were Death Watch or which were Custodians. Yeah. Um, Death Watch are the in between uh, of Grey Knights and regular Marines. So they're Super Space Marines, but they're not. But super, they're not super. They're not like Custodian level Space Marines. They're super, they're super Space Marines. Then you've got Super Psyker Space Marines. Then you've got Super Duper Space Marines, which are custodians. Hooey, what a tier list. What, so they're, they're, they're better than your average Space Marine. For every 100 Marines, there's one Death Watch. For every 1,000 Marines, there's one Grey Knight, that kind of thing. Ooh, so one Death Watch is worth 1,000 spa- or 100 Space Marines? Not worth. There is probably one. They're rare. Oh, 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 okay. So one in every 100 Space Marines is going to be a Death Watch. Also, no. It, it, it's it's a figure Wait, of speech. What? Just like, it's a figure of speech. Just like, for every 100 Space Marines, one Space Marine is, is, is good enough to join the Death Watch, is a veteran enough to join the Death Watch, the best, the brightest. Oh, one okay. in a 100. I'm, I'm just taking your phrasing too literal. Okay, gotcha. That's okay. Warhammer does literal pretty pretty rough. Yeah, I mean, I we literally just quote, talked about a man suplexing a quote, train. I took the quote too literally. I took this part too literally. Apparently, I am I am Drax today, where where it's just too literal, and I'm not getting metaphors. They would not fly over my head. My reflexes are too fast. I would catch them. Right. That's that's it, me today. Apparently, 
in fairness, out of this many uh, Adeptus Ridiculous episodes, I have trained you to not take uh, to take things very literally in Warhammer <laughs> to show that subtlety is for losers. <laughs> Well, I hey, give your you training's credit. paid off because, man, I am on the literal train today. And I, although I'm getting suplexed, huh? I'm getting. Eh, eh, eh. Eh, anyway. Eh, thematic, um, eh? <clears throat> so it is built up. Uh, the Death Watch is built up of the best and brightest of the various chapters. Um, Space Marine chapters are fully aware of the Death Watch, unlike the Grey Knights. While the Death <laughs> Watch are still really secretive, they are not as secretive. Yeah. Um, and so if a Marine in particular in – give me a chapter. Uh, the Blood Angels. Okay, the Blood Angels. If a Marine in the Blood Angels really excels in just the slaughter of Xenos, is just really <laughs> damn good at murdering aliens and, and has that, that hate in your heart, then three members of the chapter will end up judging them. You will have the Captain – for skill and combat, the apothecary for general physical ability, and the chaplain for strength of character and soul. And with the three of these people's approvals, they will then go to the chapter master and and ask if they will uh, the, or be- bequest consult consult the chapter master mm. for approval on this kind of uh, of thing. Okay, and if the chapter master party. gives you a th- okay. Yeah, and if the chapter master gives you a thumbs up, then bada bing, bada boom, they will be sent off to the Death Watch. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Battle Brother can deny if they wanted to, but they yeah, often I w- don't. I was going to ask, does anybody ever deny that? Like, would anybody ever, would any Space Marine deny the honor of being a Death Watch because they're just like, well, but I, I love my chapter mates so much, I just can't imagine leaving them, even for the honor of the Death Watch or something. Is that Does that happen often? Does it ever happen? Has it ever happened? I don't know. I, I'm, I would be positive that it has happened. I would also be positive that it does not happen much. Yeah, it's probably very, very rare. And they, obviously, they're still, like, oh, sworn to their chapter. Uh, very often when you join the Death Watch, it's still chapter first, Death Watch second. Uh, but the more time you spend in the Death Watch, you kind of that kind of flips. Oh, um, so, so when you join the Death Watch, you don't just immediately get shipped off to, like, a Death Watch base or something? No, you, you do. Oh, okay. You're taking it too literally again. Damn it! All right, <laughs> It's it's that kind of day. I'm sorry, all right? It's just, apparently it's a very literal day for me. Literally, I, it is a day. I felt so good putting all my metaphors in this script, <laughs> and here I am. And, and of course, today is the day I take things too literally and just ruin your metaphors. <laughs> so, their armor is um, is uh, painted. So, oh, ah, God damn it, not, okay. Um, so, sorry. after this... They, they 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 say yes. They're like, cool, yeah, I'm going. Um, and there's often a ceremony held uh, for their brother because remember this is like a veteran of, hey, this of the is chapter, an honor, right? This is a big time. So of course, yeah, it's a big honor. But also, they have spent a ton of time murdering Xenos. They've had a, a bunch of campaigns. You know, this is this is a long a long term veteran of this chapter. They they're mm-hmm. good at their job. Very um, good. So, so a ceremony is held. Oh, well, the Ultramarines have one where they all gather and, and wish them the best before they the board the Thunderhawk. The Dark Angels go to them and they're like, if you say a goddamn word. <laughs> yeah. You keep your goddamn mouth shut. You hear me? Oh, we're so happy for you. They hug, leaning close. You shut the cup. Don't say anything. The, uh, it's, that's only like a mild exaggeration. Their ceremony is one of secrecy. Oh, of course, um, they're the Dark Angels. Everything is a secret with them. But uh, after that, their armor is then, before they, they board and leave, their armor is painted jet black as a kind of like martyr. Like they are out there to mm. most likely die to the Xenos in this hard, something known as the Long Vigil. And in this, the Long Watch. They obviously mm. like their watch has ended. Yeah. Um. And so they are painted jet black as like this kind of martyrdom type thing to the yeah. Xenos. And they're sent over. Huh. I'm not sure why, but I just assumed that they would get like 
new armor, but I guess once you're a space marine, you're kind of well. No, they they can take off their armor, I suppose. But yeah, I don't know why oh, yeah. I thought that like they would get new like special Death Watch uh, ceramite. But yeah, I guess you can just paint the damn thing black, and there you go. The I mean, I'm sure you know they might swap their armor at some point, but oh sure, like, for the most part, there's damage. Black. They probably have like the the servants like change it, repair it, so on and so forth. But yeah. Uh, Shy said they also honor their chapters on their shoulders. Do they? Do they just keep the symbol there, or because it looks like in that picture he they literally just didn't paint his shoulder and his arm? No, so the, that picture you you can't see. The so Death Watch have oh. we'll, we'll we'll talk about this a little bit later. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Uh, we'll explain the the difference a bit more, but yeah, I just thought um, that was like a like a you know a gray knight shoulder or something. And that's why it looked silver and not painted on that side. Well, gray knights don't go to the death watch. That's true. Cause gray knights are, are there yeah. to fight yeah. demons. Yeah. Just, just, yeah. I just figured that was a silver arm from someone. Anyway, doesn't matter. Continue. Sorry. Didn't um, mean to derail. So the train, so the derail the train with a suplex. <laughs> um, so they go off to something known as a watch fortress, watch fortress. I think it's called a Watch Fortress. Oh man, this is really going. Back yeah, to that Watch Fortress, isn't it? This is really hitting that quote hard now. So, Watch Fortresses are basically various super duper hidden, uh, well, fortresses in tons of different areas, random planets, orbital battle stations, all in other segments of the Segmentum Solar and other areas of the uh, galaxy, and they kind of operate from this fortress and deal with whatever is their main issue there. Like for example, um Talasa Prime is one is the headquarters and primary training world of them, uh which is often dealing with things like Tyranids. The Eye of Damocles is dealing with the Tau Empire for the most part. Okay. And so on and so forth. Okay. Okay. So th- they're specifically stationed in areas to deal with a specific Xenos threat. Yeah, basically. Okay. Um, and then once they're there, they are trained, of course, rigorously, give them in tip top shape, even if they weren't already in tip top shape. Yeah, I was and say then they're veteran space Marines, how much more in shape could they get? Well, you know, you got to fight the alien. That's true. Um, and then uh, they are hit with a lot of psycho indoctrination. Uh, yeah, but this is a different, Imperium. different kind of indoctrination. Uh-huh. More of a, all right, you've killed a lot of aliens. That's cool. Let us teach you everything that we know about the aliens. And oh. also, by the way, let us teach you everything we know about these other 1,000 alien species that we also know about. Well, that doesn't sound like psycho indoctrination. That just sounds like valuable information for the faction that is specifically built to kill Xenos. Okay, maybe I'm maybe I'm a little maybe I'm, this is actually the funny part. Maybe you should have taken it more literally. Um, th- this God is literally them it. like, what like is implanting, <laughs> they're implanting the information into their brain, oh, like, oh. like physically. Oh, I thought so, they so just it, had like classroom, like lectures about Xenos and stuff. I was like, oh, well that seems valuable. I didn't know they were taking a capsule and just shoving it in your brain to literally give you all the information <laughs> you need. Is that what they're doing? All right, Battle Brothers, Tell who can tell me what the Dominatrix does? <laughs> They're all holding up their, ooh, ooh, me, me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, oh, th- yeah, there's this awesome image. I love this image. Um, this is the various Whoa. other Xeno species that we've never heard of or ever seen in the galaxy. Oh, and, and None like, of them have been mentioned? If you are looking, okay, maybe the one on the right hand side looks a little bit like the sloth, but besides that, every single one of these alien species is never talked about. These Whoa. are entirely for world building, and Dude, this is a great example so of like, cool. yeah, it's a great example of hey, by the way, don't forget a million worlds <laughs> yeah. for the Imperium only, <laughs> only. Oh man, I, I I can't stop looking at this. I want I want to know what those like uh, those orb guys on the left are all about. 
Because like right? there's, there's a, a guard human that's there like, too. Yeah, and he's just screaming in agony, as well he should. And and they've got those weird dangly arms. The the top right one looks like something straight out of chaos. That looks like a chaos. I don't know, dreadnought or not a dreadnought, but it, it, it looks, looks like very a Mad Max, dude. It almost um, yeah yeah. Kind of looks I, like I, corpus, I like the actually. I like the bottom left guy. He looks like the shark laser in like Austin Powers or something. <laughs> he looks like something that's already in Warhammer, though. True, true. The uh, bottom one looks, looks like a chaos spawn. Absolutely. The one on the one that's just straight up on the right kind of looks also kind of familiar. It almost looks like a mushroom. Looks like something that. Uh, yeah, I thought it was the sloth that we talked about in the Alpharius episode. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Creepy worm dudes because they had mm-hmm. some constructs like that. Mm-hmm. But um, but I don't know. But yeah, I mean, like you, you have a thousand other alien species out there. Just it just happens that the big bad ones are the ones you play on the tabletop. But yeah, yeah. there are uncounted other Xenos races out there, mm. and you know, God knows what they do. Yeah. Well, the Death Watch have an idea. Maybe exactly. Yeah. So once you got your psycho indoctrination, you learn everything you got to learn. Uh, your rank is then removed, and you are assigned to a kill team. A kill wow. team is a group of brothers up to 10 people and all from separate chapters. So this oh. is where the fun part of the Death Watch comes in, where you're like, I love all these chapters. I can't pick a good one. Well, ah. why not all of them? Just go Death Watch. For example, uh, if you were to scroll up and look at that Codex cover with all of the red on it, um, if you were to look oh, yeah. at the um, look at the individual space marines, bottom left, see a hood and a plasma pistol. Oh yeah, that's a dark that angel. Top uh, uh, top middle, you can see a dude with yellow on his shoulder and a big shield. That's oh, yeah. yeah, imperial fist. There's a black templar on the bottom right. Isn't there's that a blood a- angel in the middle? I- I'm not saying anything about his faction because I don't. Uh, but isn't that an ultramarine front and center? Uh, with the uh, thing on top his? left, uh, kind of. Yeah, he's got the kind of I don't know if that's an iron halo, but he's got no helmet is pointing his bolt out. I can see like kind of the little horseshoe uh, logo yep. on his. Yeah, that'd be an ultramarine. Uh, it looks like a probably a space wolf in the bottom uh, middle. You can see has like a fur pelt behind his head and he's got oh, a mustache. Yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I'm going to assume the left of the Ultramarine, it looks like a aggressor, but I'm assuming it's a salamander because it's got a flamethrower. Ah, good, good. Yep. You will go with that. And then uh, there's like a Phobos guy with the the white uh, skull grill on the right-hand side in the background. I'm kind yeah, of assuming yeah. it's Raven Garden. Fair. So, yeah. That's, yeah. All, that's- all types. That's that's kind of like a fun little like where's I don't want to say where's Waldo, but it's kind of you know it's kind of fun to like look through these pictures and be like oh what faction are you what what chapter are you you know yeah. oh look there's the blood angels thing oh look there's a pelt you must be this and that's kind of cool it's kind of cool so, also do is it ever a case where like they'll put people from the same chapter in a thing or do they specifically be like yeah no you're never gonna be paired up with one of your old battle brothers. I mean, I, I don't know. It's rare because it's rare that you get a lot of people that join the Death Watch from the same chapter, like, oh, that's within true. a time frame. Yeah. Um, but often I think they like to put various chapters in it because you can mix a ton of special skills. Uh, and often there's this sort of bonding through war. Because when they join these kill teams, there's actually quite a lot of rivalries that happen. You know, there's a lot of various chapters. They do not like each other, Um, but they all hate the Xenos. And often through the fires of war itself, they will end up becoming friends, comrades and Mm -hmm. become really effective. And, you know, it's good to have various skills. The Blood Angel will most likely tear shit apart in melee way better than than an uh, Imperial Fist might. But when, the, when it's like, oh, God, we're surrounded. We need to hold a position. The Imperial Fist guy is like, oh, yeah, it's <laughs> my time. <laughs> Fortify, baby. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's uh, mm-hmm. it's good to have the, the variousness. And so, as you can tell, one shoulder pad is always of their chapter. And the other is the silver of the Death Watch, their seal and um, the, the skull. Ah, so that's OK. Gotcha. That's where that came from. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah, that's where the silver is. OK. Uh, so 
one thing that's kind of fascinating about the Death Watch that people don't often know is that they're not very Puritan. Um, uh, yeah, Death I Watch, so, yeah. they're a lot like the Grey Knights, where despite parts of the Inquisition not maybe not agreeing, uh, necessity requires like like necessity trumps their emotion and hate. Well, there's yeah. still plenty of hate, but um, <laughs> it's forty k. There's <laughs> hate is in uh, premium. We have a surplus of hate. Now the death, specifically the Death Watch, like to not just murder Xenos, but they they have a whole bunch of studying them. Sometimes Xenos are just like not that violent, and they just leave them alone, and they just kind of keep an eye. Oh, um, so yeah, the Puritans probably would hate that because they'd be like, "What are you doing? Don't leave it alone. Burn it to burn it to ash. Kill it. Just don't study it. We don't study these things. We." Yeah, I can see that. I can see the Puritans being a little pissed off about that. They also very often observe and um, and like do the acquisition of devices, artifacts, other tech from aliens. Oh, they're and really they will give studying it alien tech. Oh yes, and they give it to the Admech to like study, learn, discover, see what you can figure out from this. Ah, uh, yeah. The Puritans would be very unhappy about that. Yeah. Yeah. So often, actually, sometimes they'll even use the weapons against the aliens. Oh, yeah. Which is, I, uh, isn't that now, now we're going pretty hard, right? I, I was going to say, aren't we bordering on heresy here? Using alien tech and learning from it and using alien weapons? Isn't Aren't we heading into nigh heretical territory for the Imperium? Well, if you remember in a certain assassin book, what does a Callous assassin have on her wrist? Oh, yeah, she has the, um, um, mm, I know, I know you know wrist? what it is, you just I don't know have what the it name. Is. I just, yeah, it's, just, you know, you know. It, yeah, it's a living metal Necron face blade. Yeah. Was that, did you not? No, that's what it is. I just, I, I thought it had like a fancy name, like a okay. Oh, like uh, a, yeah. I don't, I don't know specifically. Like a, I don't know. I thought it had some weird, quirky name or something instead of just yeah. It's a necrodermis living blade. Uh, okay. Well, you know what? Imperial agents, codex, data sheets, Caldus assassin, melee weapons, phase <laughs> sword. Yeah, I, no, I'm not saying you're wrong. I just, in my head, I had some elegant... Well, I forgot what it was called was also. So. For, so. Oh, okay, cool. Um, but, yes, uh, the, it is a phase sword. And then, yeah, there's a Death Watch guy on the cover with a Xeno phase blade, which is pretty evidently Necrons. <laughs> no way! The thing with that's, that's, that's crackling green lightning and has very obvious like runes and sigils on it that's necron you say hey you've been taking shit too literally today don't 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 you be sassy <laughs> okay fine okay fine you're right you're right you're right you're right you're right there's actually this I, i've never seen this image before but there's this dope image of the death watch fighting the eldar um i think i may have uh epic embed fi- oh no there it goes no just take um time. But uh, they, they got an avatar cane up there on a on a big old throne. Whoa. There's some autarchs. I've never seen this before, wow. but they're taken from tons of chapters. That is such a cool piece of art. Oh my god! Also, that avatar of corn is about to absolutely slaughter that dude in the cape. Like avatar of what now? Corn. I said. Nope. I said. I said yep. Kane. It's Kane? Not- Kane. There Kane. you go. Avatar oh, Corn was the Storm of Iron gal. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 been a great day for me on this episode. I am just getting everything right. I mean, wow. It's just you a know, real tour de force today. <laughs> you guys make fun of me plenty and, and it's time for it's time for a little back and forth now. Oh no, I don't no no no. It's it's a one way street, Bricky. There's no there's no going the it's, it's, this is a one way street. It's mm. Mm? Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, regardless. Um <laughs> as so Death Watch obviously, you know, kill the alien, murder the alien. Yeah. But Whoa. Pat 
Oh dear. What the? <laughs> oh oh oh. So uh, this is what uh, Shy was mentioning. The there's no official description of what the shoulder pad says in High Gothic. Oh. So this is what someone came up with as a fan version, but is not currently canon. Though it certainly would fit in a canon to to hate Xenos to. The mark of Xenos is to be impure, abhorred, mm-hmm. reviled, hunted, etc. There is a good, yep, yep. there is a good quote, which is, um, oh crap, where is it? It's like, it's some, it's something about murdering Xenos, so you know you love it. There it is. <laughs> nope, that's the wrong one. There it is. He who allows the alien to live shares its crime of existence. Oh. <laughs> I love that. Oh, man. What a great Death Watch quote. What a great Death Watch quote. <laughs> yeah, suffer, suffer not the alien to live is their battle cry? Oh, yeah. That's the thing. Oh, that's great. <laughs> very on I, the nose, very on brand, but still two thumbs up. I, uh, I, you know, there are few worlds... Uh, are few like universes in in the world that have such a power where the cr- the words crime of existence the crime is your foul existence the sentence is death anyway um so other than that though the rest of the death watch as far as how they operate is all kind of like a side deal we could do a whole episode on death watch war gear and and the stuff they they carry because oh my god the amount of things that they have on their arsenals it, well i mean they kind of have to right because they're dealing with the xenos and the xenos is like the biggest threat in the galaxy so they've got to be kitted out with like would you would you say the xenos are the biggest threat or would you say chaos uh, i mean the Nids are currently kind of the thing right now. Yeah, the Nids kind of are a big problem. I guess, well, I mean, I guess everything is a problem, right? What What would you say is, like, the priority right now? Like, the Nids are a problem, but isn't, I mean, Abby is still off doing some <laughs> not great things with um our Forge buddy. Uh, what's his name again? How dare you? How uh, the dare one you made a shirt you. for? How the, I well, I well, I was legally distinct. Oh, that's right. Bastor. <laughs> Bastor. It's a day, okay? It's a I am, day. I am so unfathomably upset. <laughs> I, I I look, I don't blame you, all right? But but still, right. Abby's off doing that shenanigans, and who knows what they're up to. But I mean, currently, like they're just they're just off preparing for some big oof. But right some now, big I mean, oh, all right, all right, it, it, it's fine. They're, they're both equally pretty terrifying. Yeah. Um, but no, shy. I have not noted kill ships yet. Did you want to cover that in this episode? We are forty six or so minutes in. Kill so ships. I mean, kill ships. <laughs> Is that something I should be taking literally? Like. Uh, Here. Go ahead, read it. Read it for yourself. <clears throat> kill ships. Kill, kill ships are unique weapon relics used by the Death Watch. They are actually automated drone ships guided by the most sophisticated of war spirits, designed with a singular task of conducting exterminatus operations in the most extreme of circumstances on worlds that are believed to be completely lost to the Imperium. Oh. I love the fact that we have that we have drone bombings. Yeah. <laughs> but but for for the planets, I mean I I'm 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 glad that it's that because I as soon as I saw kill ships I was like oh no please don't tell me it's just a ship that they just go like it's gonna go as fast as possible and then just rams into anything that Xenos and just that's and an it, orc thing true that would be more of an orc thing but I mean it's called a kill ship it, it does what it's supposed to do so g- good for them they they drone strike the Xenos but uh. Other than, I, I mean, I suppose we could do another episode on all of the various war gear because, uh, crazy enough, you look at the Death Watch minis, they're, they're the Death Watch minis are a bit old. They're they're oh. a bit old. Um, however, and so they're, they're kind of have like the stubby look. Uh, yeah. So the, 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 those are the updated ones right there. These are the updated ones. These look better. Oh, yeah, those look fine. Yeah. 
Um, this is a singular kill team, I believe, that is um, – and like a Watchmaster and Apothecary uh, yeah. that they updated. But the old ones do look kind of funky. They look kind of kind of lanky and short like the old Marines tend to do mm. tend to look. Honestly, I'm um, kind of surprised that they have specific Death Watch minis. I kind of figured it would just be one of those things where it's like, oh, yeah, you buy Space Marines and then you buy a Death Watch conversion kit. And then you just plaster on the arm and paint them black. Uh, so besides the one Shy posted, I believe that is literally what you do. Yes. Okay. So they don't. Okay. Oh, I was right. Hooray. Some, uh, oh, here we go. Like, like here's some of the older ones. Like they're not bad, but you can kind of tell. Like the torsos are a little thin. They're a little. Uh, they're oh, a little stubbier yeah, yeah. looking. Yeah. The, uh, the kind of the helmet one looks. Ugh, I, I just I don't know what it is about like uh, 40k minis, but I just do not like the way. Uh, the unhelmeted uh, Marines look. It's just ten, nine times out of ten, I'm just like, yo, just put the helmet on them. They look uh, at such a yeah, fine it's... detail to paint too that it's like you gotta really have those crazy like doctor gla- doctor magnifying glasses on to get in there and do it right. And it's you yeah, just keep the helmet on. It's, it's a pretty cold take. Many people do not like painting heads. Yeah, like I said, you, you need such a small, fine brush, and it's just, uh, yeah, I can't imagine that's a fun thing that anybody likes doing. But uh, the minis themselves, like, there are a couple other pretty cool minis that go along with it. Um, particularly, they have a flyer that is super goddamn dope. Uh, yeah. It is known as the Corvus Black Star. Ooh, and that name. I'm assuming Corvus, like, Corex? I spelt that way, but I don't think it's related to him. Actually, I, it could be. I don't, I'm not 100%. Um, Does but, it look like a raven? Uh, no, it does no, not. It does no, not. <laughs> it does not. Very cool, though. That is super dope. That's one of the better-looking flyers uh, I've seen in 40K for sure. So the Corvus Black Star is a combination of a transport and gun platform. Uh, as you can tell from it, it has uh, some LAS cannons, a giant rack of missile launchers mm-hmm. on the side. And, um, you know, just, just generally transports people in there. It's very sleek. It kind of gives me like stealth bomber vibes. I was about to say that. It's like if you put like a storage container inside of a stealth bomber, it would be like this. Or it would look like yeah. that anyway. Yeah. Pretty much. It's, it's, well, yeah, it's a little thick. It's not very like stealth uh, sure. bomber thin. Yeah. But, it is but it's got the same kinda, vibes. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, it's, it's pretty fun. It's a fun, like, uh, kind of mini for the most part. Uh, and that's one of their major other dedicated minis outside of the kill teams specifically. Um, cause oh. you've got like, you basically got all kinds of various kill teams that you can run, and they all have fancy names like Fortis Kill Team, Indometer Kill Team, Proteus Kill Team, and basically it just depends on what armor you're running. Like the Indometer Kill Team is basically all uh, Gravis units, right? Which is like okay. the big chunky armor, and then uh, uh, and Proteus Kill Team, I believe, is um, I think it's the one that has the one that Shy posted. Hmm. Kill Team Cassius is something. Uh, but then, of course, at the end, there's the Watchmaster, and the Watchmaster is like your main captain person. Mm-hmm. And they, so that's uh, the only like dedicated like Death Watch vehicle. Other than that, it's just like, oh yeah, you can run Bane blades with them, but you just paint it different. They don't have any. Well, a Bane blade is a is a guard unit. Well, whatever. You get the idea, though. Like, a Land Raider or something. A yes. Land Raider or something. You just paint it like black and gold or black and silver and. They don't have anything else that's like specific to them. That seems weird to me. I mean, not really, because they're not really a specific uh, a specific faction. They they are a collaboration yeah. of small strike forces. It just seems like they'd want like the they'd want specially kitted out stuff, and like they'd want theirs. I don't know. I mean, they, they do have so specially special, kitted out stuff. You know? like, okay, Th- this is why we need to do the second episode on all their war gear because they have a lot of wacky weapons, swords, all kinds of things like that. Ah, um, okay. But not so much in terms of the vehicles. And, like, you okay. know, think about it. Gray, Gray Knights don't have a whole lot of fancy-pantsy stuff either. They're just a bunch of teleporting Marines. True. True, I guess. Sure. Yeah. They have, like, the Dread Knight, and that's about it. Everything else is the same. Yeah. So we're going to do a second uh, episode on these guys, right? 
Yeah, most likely. If anything, just the, the wacky Wahoo world of Death Watch war gear. Yeah. And then we'll also, talk maybe about like the structure. Yeah. Uh, who's their chapter master? So I, so they have a thing called a watch commander. That's their main guy. Yeah. Um, Who's I that? Cause he's gotta be a badass, right? If you're, if you're like the head, well, as close to a head honcho for the death watch as you can get, you've gotta be quite the spice marine. I don't actually know who the watch commander is. We can talk about that next episode. I know yeah, yeah, yeah. I there was gonna is say there's a, probably um, something for a separate episode, but I was just like, that guy's got to be a little bit crazy. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, brother. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, what was yeah. that? We're going to end it. the episode. Oh, take yeah. a train and suplexes. I'm going to take the train and drop the elbow. Yep. The queen. Oh, yeah, the cream. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I take a tyranny dominatrix and I suplex it.